All right, thank you everyone for joining us for Joseph Tran, Europe speaker. And I have uh, Madison Alvey, who's going to introduce our guest speaker today. Well, um, today we have with us Joseph Tran. He has lived a pretty co colorful life so far. He's been a stuntman. He's an actor who has appeared on film, TV, and video games, speaking multiple languages. He travels all over the world with his magic and has won some of magic's greatest accolades. And he creates and consults magic for some of TV's fil TV films' top actors and directors. So everyone, please welcome Joseph Tran. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, my name is Joseph, live streaming from you all the way from Hollywood, California. Thanks. It is an honor to be a part of the Gear Up program at uh, Indiana University Southeast. I was actually an intern for Gear Up uh, way, way back working with students. And then before I did Gear Up, I was sitting on your side of the chair, like as a student and watching Gear Up interns tell me about college and whatnot. Okay, I know it's kind of a scary time and everything, uh, but yes, let's get right to it. I'm gonna show you a quick piece of magic because y'all build me as a magician, so I better show something. All right, you can do this too. What you do is you get an empty bag like this, and then you get like a bottle here. Uh, I basically live and eat and sleep by this table nowadays. Uh, what you do is get any bottle like this, give a little snap, a little wave, and yes, magic, that bottle has disappeared. But wait, here's the hard part. I have to bring it back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your cameras are on, I can see you booing. All right, non-believers, I'll show it to you one more time. Look at this. You can get any bottle, ketchup, mustard, soy sauce, Asian, what? Uh, and then you get a little snap, a little wave like this. And yes, not only does the bottle disappear again, seriously, uh, but it's like gone forever and ever. Yeah, yeah, here, look, nothing over here. Nothing over here. You see, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, the camera catches everything. You know what, screw it. Uh, if you don't wanna see that trick, I'll go do another one. That's okay, that's okay. All right, cool. All right, done. Uh, <laughs> I love doing that gag. That's, that's a silly, silly little magic gag uh, designed to get laughs, but, but I love the fact that I get paid to tour around the country and perform gags like this for awesome audiences like you. You see, I was the class clown in high school. I would get uh, in trouble all the time and my teacher would try to scare me straight by saying, Joseph, no one is ever going to pay you to be funny. But look who's laughing now. This is what I do. And I, 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 I love what I do. And I really think it shows because after my shows, uh, like my college shows, I usually go out to eat with the students who hired me and we would be sitting there waiting for our skillet queso at Chili's and they would look at me with this sort of funny light in their eyes. And then one of them would always get the courage to say what everyone's thinking. Man, you must be really happy. Like you seem like you really love your life. Now, what they don't say, but I know that they are thinking is, well, how can I do that? What can I do to uh, make things fun and cool and make me happy? Well, the answer is, uh, you can't do anything because you are woke and you are broke. Yes, yes, right here. Like my t-shirt right there. All right, I can see the, those of you who are watching, uh, quick show of hands like, who doesn't know what being woke means? I can see y'all. Okay, look, all the old people are like, and then all the young people are like, yeah, no, we're good. Okay, being woke is like taking the red pill in the matrix. You eventually go back to the matrix, but suddenly you become, become aware of all the injustices around you. Now, show of hands again, um, who thinks they are woke? This is my favorite part because no one ever raises their hands because when you first become aware, you start to get a bit worried, right? You start to wonder if you are as woke as you can be. Now, we've all had this experience. You're in class, 
you've planned out a good and woke comment, you raise your hand, the professor calls on you, you give your answer, maybe a few heads nod around you and you sit back and you think, nailed it, I've proved myself today. And then from the back of the class, you hear the two most annoying words in the English language. Well, actually, see, I'll tell you right now, we're never gonna be woke enough. It's just not possible. Now, we are always trying to approach infinite levels of wokeness, but we never quite reach that. But being broke on the other hand, now that we have mastered. We are the overachievers of brokenness. No one ever imagined that we could be this broke. Now this current generation, the millennials and Generation Z, we are the generation that got screwed over by the previous generation. It blows my mind when the previous generation blames all of you for spending too much money on things like avocado toast. And then on the same note, I hear that this generation is too stingy. We save up too much money. We don't spend enough and we don't stimulate the economy enough. So with that pressure and coupled with the weight of trying to be more and more woke, do you know what you are? Exhausted, just completely done, mental reserves down to zero. You start to spiral into unhappiness because life is terrible. So now you are woke and you are broke and you are miserable. So what do we do? Well, in my case, you do silly little magic tricks to make yourself feel better. But in general, I think the first thing we can actually do is to stop talking about the American dream or something like that. We are woke now. We don't dream anymore. We do. We need to start talking about the American experience. And in my case, with magic. Get this. Every day, there are a ton of outside forces, good and bad, conscious and subconscious, influencing you on how you think, influencing you on your perspective of life. Hell, you, some of you might be studying this already. It's called marketing. But no, I will prove to you how easily your perspective can be influenced. Uh, I see uh, Emily there. Hello, Emily. Good to see you. By the way, if you can't see me at a full screen, take a look at that upper left corner. Click on the uh, view that says like speaker view. Boom. All right. But I'm going to see a few people here with that gallery. Good to see you. Emily, watch this. Little test on influence right now. Emily, your turn. Nicely done. Do it back. You see, that's how easily we can be influenced. I didn't have to say exactly what I was doing, but Emily on the other side of the screen knew exactly to catch that ball and then toss it back to me. Nicely done. Uh, let, me, let me go with something else here. Now you can do this at home too. What you do is you go home and you uh, take a whiteboard and you draw one dot on this side. On the other side, you draw four dots. On the other side, you draw three dots. On the other side, you draw six. Sorry, one more time for the benefit of everyone. Uh, on this side, you draw one dot. On this side, you draw four. On this side, you draw three. On this side, you draw six. Now I'm gonna show you how this works. You see at uh, this part right here, uh, magic, especially, it's, it's, it's about what you see and what you don't see. Now, this is the part that you see, but this is the part uh, that uh, you really don't see. See, you see this part, you don't see this part. Okay, it makes sense for some of you now. If I cover this side, it uh, looks like I have one dot. But if I cover this side, it looks like I have three dots. Influence. Just like the other side too. If I cover this side, it looks like I have four dots. But if I cover this side, it looks like I have six dots. Now, when I do this live and in person, people tend to heckle. They say, hey, show me the extra dot. And if that happens, all you got to do is tell them no. But in case, 
they see the extra dot or they want to see the extra dot, you can show that to them right there. See, just like the other side as well, if you want to show that extra dot to them, you can show that to them as well. Of course, if you have six dots here and three dots here, I don't know which side has this many dots. Thank you. That's my show. Good night. Go home. Uh, <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I got something here. Let's see. I want to make sure you can all see that here. All right. Cool. Now, I don't have to really say much, um, but I know that you'll know exactly what I'm doing. Influence. Perspective. Uh, Madison, hi. Turn off your mic for a moment and so we can hear you, okay? Now, um, I I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. All I'm going to do is... Uh, that. Madison, your turn. Uh, would you pick a square? Go um, for it. The upper right corner. The upper right corner. Now, th it would be... Yeah, that's this, fine. That one's this good. one right here? Yeah. Easy peasy. Obviously, we know this game here. There are over 250,000 possible combinations. Let's see what I'm going to do. Madison, your turn. Top, middle. Bottom right. This one? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. That one. Tried to trick her on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, let's do this one. The, uh, the, the last middle one left. The last middle one left, but, yeah. right here. Yeah. Now you see, even though we each had a free choice, I can tell you that I've won the, the game. Wait. Uh, oh, wait, shoot, sorry. Uh, I was not able to influence you. We actually had a little bit of a tie here. Or was I? Remember, I mentioned to you that there are over 250,000 possible combinations. I wasn't trying to win the game. I was trying to influence you. And maybe I was successful. You see here, mm. this combination happens. You see, those tricks I showed you were all about influence and perspective and everyday influences shape our perspective. Now, I don't mean the kind of perspective like things aren't as bad as they seem. A lot of times, especially now, things are as bad as they seem. But what I'm talking about is perspective of yourself. How you see yourself when you look in the mirror. Now, when I was in high school, I was interested in acting. I try out for all the plays, and to be honest, I'd never get cast, but I st still hung out with the theater kids. Now, I'm not saying that this is a factor, but the kids who got cast in all the roles, they all had one thing in common, and, and it wasn't talent. It was because they were all white, because they were white. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't mind that. It was, it was, it's not like it was their fault, but... There was this one guy who always rubbed me the wrong way. Now, he was half white, half Vietnamese. I I'm full Vietnamese. So this guy was always trying to hang out with the white kids and act like he didn't have an Asian dad at home. Whenever the subject of him being a uh, mixed race came up, he'd always change the subject. So one day, I figured it out. 
I looked him in the eyes and I asked him, you are ashamed of being Vietnamese, aren't you? And he said nothing. He just looked at me and he nodded. That was the first time I felt inferior because of my heritage. Because here is this one guy, this, this one guy who could have been my friend in that really clicky world. And he didn't want anything to do with me because of the heritage that we share. And somehow I took that chip on his shoulder and, and I put it on mine. And I, I carried it around for years. I would be angry. I would be practicing card magic angrily in my room. Look, now it's bad enough when you're an angry theater student, but when you're like an angry college student, your parents would walk into your room while you're doing this. And they'd be like, oh, thank goodness, he's normal. And then I turn around and they'd be like, oh, dang. But eventually my anger got to the point where I said to myself, you know what? If everyone is going to look down on me for being Vietnamese, I might as well play the part. So when I grew up and started to get paid, uh, getting paid to do magic for, for years, I would start my show like this. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Joseph. Uh, I come to this country about five years ago and I'm gonna show you some magic right now. And it got a huge laugh. I would continue on, uh, this is my first trick. And eventually I'd be like, I'm just kidding, folks. I'm from Burbank. <laughs> and I killed every night. I killed. Now, one night, though, I was performing at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. Now, it, this is a really big deal for magicians. This is one of the meccas of magic of all the world. And I had some friends in the audience. So I walked out on stage and I started doing my accent. I'm like, hello, my name is Joseph. I'm going to show you some magic right now at the Magic Castle. Castle. And uh, I, I'm just doing it. My friends are dying trying to hold in their laughter. I keep going. And then this poor old lady in the front row, she turns around. She's like, shh, he's trying so hard. And I was like, holy crap. I am an idiot. I'm an idiot because here's this woman who has just no idea who I am. And she's defending me, defending my honor. And she thinks I literally learned English yesterday. And if this lady thinks better about me than I do, then I'm an idiot. And suddenly that, that chip fell off my shoulder and I stopped opening with that bit that very night. So that's where I'm coming from perspective. That's what I mean by perspective. Oh, and by the way, out of all those cool hotshot theater kids from high school, I am the only one who gets to go on stage or get on the front of the virtual camp and, and, and do what he loves to do every single night. But I let that guy influence my sense of self for years. Why did I have, why did I let him have so much power over me? Honestly, I don't know. But when I get down on myself, I remind myself that I do what I love to do, influence and perspective. So that brings me to my next trick, which I call, screw that guy. Uh, I'm gonna bring you over here to uh, my dual camera setup. Good to see you all here. And uh, let me see. Wait, 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 I gotta, I gotta put, I'm gonna change this camera right uh, here to this one. Because I wanna put uh, my hands right here so you can see me. Hello, these are my hands right here. Uh, this trick is my mom's favorite trick. What you do is you get a few dollar bills, not a lot of money I know. 
Uh, but it's not about how much money you make. It's about how creative you are with your money. I'll show you what I mean by that. Watch the bills very carefully. I won't move. My hands are even pulled up. I'll even have a camera right here. Hello. Good to see you. Okay. Watch these bills. Now, it would look really neat if they all look like $100 bills. In fact, they all are $100 bills, every single one of them. It's a good reminder that uh, my job is pretty awesome. <laughs> now, these bills, they seem real. They feel real. They even have the real security markings of $100 bills. But the thing is, if I could do this all the time, I would totally be doing this for all of you and wiping out your entire college debt. Unfortunately, every time I take these bills and put it back into my wallet, for some reason, they always come back into the dollar. I hate that part, but uh, money is easy cut. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know how it is. You know how it is. <laughs> All right, cool. Want to see one more? I, you know what? Um, grab your phones out. Uh, have your phones handy. You might need a little bit later. I'm going to show you one more here, something uh, I've been working on here. Um, let's see. Uh, we all know that phones are made out of uh, like Gorilla Glass or Corning Glass, Apple Glass, but just like your skin, if you hit it on just the right spot, um, you can get like a paper cut. Same with a phone too. Uh, you might have seen that. I, I put a cut in my phone here. I don't know if I can actually do this or not, but I'll certainly try. Now, what you are looking at is an illusion. Illusion. This is actually not happening despite how good that looks. Illusion. You see, the paper is not passing through the phone. Now, obviously, this is just a card. But this is not a real phone. You see, this phone here, this... This, this camera here, it's not a camera. It's really a sticker. And uh, if you listen, this is not a phone at all. It's just a solid piece of steel. That still confuses me. Those tricks are hard. Very hard. I spend lots of nights home alone in my room. Uh, <laughs> no, they are very hard. Now, now I'll, I'll be honest. When, when I first started doing magic, when I was like nine or 10 or so, uh, I enjoyed learning how all the tricks work, but I hated performing them in front of an audience. And, and that's because, believe it or not, to this day, I am a huge introvert. I have huge stage fright. Yeah, terrified to be in front of people. It, it, it stresses me out so much. And uh, for some reason, though, my love for this craft overcomes all that. And I remember way back when I was a kid, my, my magic mentor told me that that's the greatest trick that you're going to learn. It's a, it's a mind over matter trick, mind over matter. You've ever heard that, mind over matter, mind over matter. It means uh, you, that you've got to sort of ignore your feelings. You've got to power through, you gotta move forward, get it done mind over matter. Uh, and then <clears throat> in recent days, someone said uh, something to the extent of, um, but if it don't mind, if you don't mind, then it don't matter. But the problem is, is that this generation, we, we do mind a lot. And, and that's not a bad thing. It, it means that we care a lot. We, this is the age of being woke. We care. We, we mind everything. But the problem is, is that we mind everything. And that alone stresses you all out. I feel you. I feel you. you. You are going into college at a crazy time and you have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Literally. So I have an update called the five by five rule. Whatever you're mad about or stressed about, 
if it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes on it. Ah, but my professor's a dick and uh, I just he mistreated me in front of everyone in class. Well, in five years, you won't remember your professor's name. It won't matter. Five minutes, move on. Hey, that person online called me a snowflake. You literally don't even know that person. Shoot, it may not even be a real person. It could be like a Russian bot for all you know. If you spend more than five minutes being angry uh, of a, because of a bot, then we've got bigger problems. Let it go, move on. Now here's the flip side. There's the stuff that will matter in five years. But Joseph, my boyfriend, the love of my life cheated on me. I was going to marry him. My whole future is changed now. In five years, in 10 years, yes, that is going to matter. And, and, and to that, I say, it will matter. It must matter. Yes, it will matter. And it will matter though, as long as you let it. I, I get it, I get it. One time I dated a girl who uh, I thought was gonna be someone I was gonna marry. Now it didn't work out because I'm Buddhist and she's a uh, lying, cheating wench. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just serious. But it took a lot of time for me to get over it. And I needed to get, give myself permission to wallow and to feel it and then to get over it. Eventually, I had to allow myself to make it stop mattering to me. Now, if you let that one incident matter for the rest of your life, you are going to miss out on the boyfriend who won't cheat on you. If you worry about the things that could have been, you will be blind to the things that can be right now. Now, I know, I, I know what you're thinking. You're, you're, I, I see it in all of you. You're thinking, but I'm not blind. But sure you are. We, we all are. It's human nature to be blind. I'll prove it to you. Uh, everyone, take a look around you and count all the red objects you see right now. Take a look around you, count all the red objects. Red shirts, red hats, red backpacks, red paintings, red rugs, red anything. Okay, now look back at me. Hello. Now think to yourself, how many blue objects did you just see? I know, your mind just went, wait, uh, uh. You see, magicians know this. Uh, that is called selective focus. We all do it and, and we are, are hardwired to do that because our brains get so much stimuli every single day. We have to pick and choose the things to pay attention to. Our brain does this subconsciously. I can sit here all day and do trick after trick and fool you every single time because I know how to direct your focus. The same goes for bad memories and bad habits. We naturally see what we want to see. But here is the cool part. Your brain is not doing it solely subconsciously. Our conscious selves can do that as well. We can choose to see the good, but we have to be aware of it. Magicians know this inherently. I know this. You see, we naturally see what we want to see, but we must be aware of the bad, but choose to notice the good. Now, I, I know you've read quotes that say that we have to choose to be happy. And, and for me, that's hard. That's not relevant to me. I, I don't get how you choose to be happy. But I do understand the choice to notice the good. And folks, I won't butter you up. Right now, it's currently a really, really screwed up world out there. You know, there are those people out there who have become emboldened to voice their inner seeds of racism and hatred. There are those out there who make it their mission in life to divide and plant hostility towards one another. So how do you see the good? I choose to see the good though. Because from that, especially in this generation, I see people coming together to protect and protest injustice to fight 
for change. People who use technology to quell hatred, people who travel to participate in other cultures, people who take valuable moments out of their day to fight for what they believe in, to help one another. Look, don't be fooled by life, okay? I, I promise you, if you consciously choose to be aware of the bad, but you, but you look for the good, you will be okay. You'll still be woke. You might still be broke, but you won't be miserable. Now, I know what you're thinking. Shut up, Joseph, and show some more magic. Fine, I will. Uh, that's why I call this next trick, screw you guys. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I want to show you something here. Uh, these are stainless steel needles here. These are surgical needles, just like the needles that you have at home. Um, a little bit sharper, a little bit thicker. Now, when I was nine years old, I got sent to the hospital for a very bad form of the stomach flu. By the time I got there, I was so dehydrated that they tried to put an IV in me five different times. And I can tell you they were not successful because I was too dry. And every single one of those times hurt like a mother. And ever since then, I have been deathly afraid of these. I've been terrified of these. Even to this day, when I get blood drawn, um, when I get a blood test, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a pansy. But as a magician, I'm always sort of facing my fears. So today I'm gonna face this one thing here. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Where am I? Now, you know, I'm going to get really close here. Look at this. Now, uh, 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 under the tongue. Uh, you know, bottom gum. Okay. Top gum. Sides. By the way, um, I was doing this yesterday, and then uh, someone came on the chat and said, I see your urethra. I told him, I believe that you're, the word that you were looking for is uvula. <laughs> All right, let's cut to the end here. All right. uh, I have here, uh, uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty something, twenty salad mod like me, fifteen, twenty needles. Doesn't matter.
Sorry. Donna says there's a museum that has the many things people have swallowed. There's a disorder that makes some people do this. Yes, that order disorder is called stupidity. Uh, <laughs> I was getting ready to call 911 in case. Uh, well, I'm not done yet. So if you could just like get your phones and just dial 9 and 1, we would be good. Okay. Oh, by the way. Sides. Urethra. Oh, uvula. Okay. I gotta bring a light here next time. Uh, <laughs> here, here. We got this right here. Look at it. Look, look at this. Ah, uh, uh, Look at it. Okay. One last thing. Perfectly al dente. All right, cool. <clears throat> One moment. Sorry for the transition. I want to make sure you can see everything from both angles. All right, right here, back, back here. I got it. I use screamer. Don't try this at home. Yes. Do not try this at home. Go to your friend's house and do it. For TikTok. I don't want you to think this is a trick or anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off I'm gonna turn off my green screen, look at it. Look at that, right there. <laughs> yes, there it is. There it is. The needles, a new necklace for me. I can see you. Go crazy. Go clap. Uh, thank you. Uh, look at that clap icon. I live for those now. I live for those. <laughs> yes, I have a professional Steve's Trist. And yes, Ms. Meyer, the acting lessons have paid off 20 years of theater right there. And I had no life in high school. Look at that. Crazy. Okay. Cool. What do you want to do now? <laughs> mm. So um, that trick is called uh, the needle swallow. Now I have done it perfectly hundreds and hundreds of times. But I have also messed it up pretty spectacularly once in front of hundreds of people. And to make it even worse, my, my girlfriend at the time, 
was um, at my show. The, the one who I met later who became my wife, not like the, the wenchy one. But anyway, she always made it a point to not know how my magic works. So imagine this. Uh, we're at a comedy club, 200 people in the audience. She's out there watching me do the trick. I swallow the needles. Boom. I swallow the thread. Um, I like everything's working fine. I start to pull the thread with the needles on it out of my mouth. And then the thread snaps. It gets stuck. So I just decided to give it a little yank and then boom, it snaps. Now those needles are stuck in my throat and the trick is ruined. And there's no way for me to get those needles out while I am on stage. Now, the only people who know something is wrong are me and my girlfriend. The rest of the audience thinks this is just part of the trick. And I can't let the audience know anything is wrong because it would give the trick away. So in that moment, I had a choice. I could freak out on stage, which is a reasonable reaction considering that I am literally choking on little bits of steel. But freaking out on stage would do a few things. Number one, it would immediately make me look like an amateur. And I often invite people who are considering like hiring me to come see my shows and I could lose work on that. Two, if I were to freak out, everyone else would freak out as well. And, and the three, heaven forbid, someone is out there recording the show on their iPhone because me freaking, me, freaking out on stage would effectively kill my career. My second option is to remain calm and listen to the part of my brain that says, hey, this is really scary, but you've got to keep on going. So um, I did exactly that. I looked at the audience and I said, thank you very much, folks. The disappearing needles trick. And I took a bow. And the audience, to my surprise, they went nuts. They went nuts. They like stood up and they started clapping like crazy. They didn't know anything was going wrong. They were like, ah, oh, guy in the front row was like, oh my God, you're gonna have the craziest poop tomorrow. Ah! And then I ran backstage. I stuck my finger down my throat. I coughed up 20 needles. And it was especially disgusting because it was clam chowder night. But I was performing this trick again by the next day with brand new needles, of course. I guarantee you, if you haven't already, you are going to have experiences like this. The, the hallmark of adulthood is realizing that there's just a lot of stuff that you're not ready for. But if you go easy on yourself and you roll with the punches and you're flexible and you move forward, you do your best to learn from it, you will be prepared to overcome any challenges, any obstacles that life throws at you. Look, here's the real secret. Nobody knows anything, okay? We're all just bluffing in one way or another. So don't feel like you are the only person in the room who has no idea what's going on. It is okay not to know. You will figure it out just like everyone else. I know this. Generation Z, you're, I have seen how you embrace technology. I have seen how you fight for the things with passion. I have seen how creative you are, and I know you will be awesome. You will figure it out just like everyone else. I know this, and believe me, as my job, I know a lot of things. I know a lot of things and I know you're gonna be great. I predicted it. In fact, I am pretty great at predicting things. I wanna show you one more thing here. Deck of cards. 
uh, regular deck carts from a very magical place called Costco. Uh, now, um, uh, this is going to be the like uh, the last time I put these cards away. I don't want to think that like I am tricking you or I'm switching the deck or anything. In fact, um, I uh, I want to hold this right here. I won't cut away. I won't do any trick shots or anything here. Um, on the other end here, I want to also leave you with a, uh, a souvenir. Let me see if I can copy this here. And then um, I'm going to message everyone here. Like that. Uh, take a look at your chat window. You can uh, take out your phones and go to, uh, go to that. Um, or if you want, uh, like just click on it and then go to your extra tab or, or something here. I'll, I'll, I'll even go with you here. I'll open, I'll open up a tab right here. Um, now what you were looking at is a, um, a copy of, uh, my Harry Houdini poster. Okay. The, that's for you to keep as a souvenir if you want it. Uh, but come back to me, come on back to me. Hello folks. Um, the, the thing is, uh, Houdini is one of the, uh, biggest, inspirations in, uh, in my magic career. So um, I'm gonna show you uh, one of my favorite tricks even. Uh, Houdini was known as a, uh, an, a, an amazing escape artist, but he's also a master card magician. And what I learned from him is that it, it doesn't matter as, as, as afraid as, as um, I am to go on stage in front of people as long as I go out there and I do the thing that makes me happy. People will see and feel that, sure. And that spawned my career today. All right, hit your chat windows right now. I want to prove to you that I cannot cheat. So we're gonna take a record of your chat windows here. Now, deck of cards has 52 cards. Yes, uh, inside of this deck, Two colors, red and black. Hit that chat window right now and tell me what you feel. Do you feel that it is a red card or a black card? I know it doesn't make sense yet, but just type it in your chat right now. Red or black? Red or black? Bl black, okay, red, red, black. Okay, now the reason why I have you do in the chat window is I don't want you to think that I have a stooge or a confederate in that audience right there. A uh, bunch of people, boom. <laughs> Matt Verdia says black don't cheat the teachers will catch you I will not cheat I promise you but I'm going to go all the way uh, to the first person so uh, Donna Donna jumped in with red thank you so that means that if it is red that means it is a heart or a diamond chime in right now is it a heart or a diamond what do you feel deep within your gut let's see who chimes in first Madison chimes in first with a heart and uh, Leanne chimes in with a heart, Emily with diamond, Destiny with diamond, but we're gonna go with the first one, Madison with the heart, finally. The hardest part right here. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, uh, king, what is it going to be? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king, right here. Okay, cool, bunch of people are chiming in right now. Uh, cool. I, I see queen, jack, ace, four, nine, queen, and everything. Okay, so we, we ended up, I want to make sure I got this here. We ended up with the queen of hearts. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop for one moment because the queen of hearts is one of the most common cards uh, that people pick in the entire deck next to the ace of spades. So, uh, but in this order in the chat window here, I see red, heart, and queen. I'm going to give you a moment here. I don't want you to think that I picked the most common card. Um, so tell me. Do you want to keep the Queen of Hearts or do you want to change your mind? First person to chime in, I'll go with your decision, okay? So we've got a red heart. Do we keep this card? Change, Madison says change. Okay, Madison. Then totally, you know what? Up to all of you right now. Do not think of the Queen. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, King. Which one is it gonna be? 10. Madison says 10 from the change. So out of that right here, let's recap. Go back to right here. Uh, Donna says red. And then from that, Madison said heart. And then Madison again said change. Uh, and she said 10, 10 of hearts. All right. Here's a really cool part here. 
Um, this is the first time I am opening this box of cards, okay? Inside of this deck, there is one card and only one card that is turned over in this entire deck. Every single one of these cards, except for what, this card right here, turned over backwards. And I don't know how you all did this, but for some reason, you correctly picked the 10 of hearts. You correctly picked the 10 of hearts. Nicely done, all of you, all of you. But the thing is, today is not about me. So I'm not, not just about my magic. Today, it's all about you. The thing is, the proof is in the pudding here. And, and I can't trick you. Remember that poster that I showed you? Go back to that poster and, and uh, take a screenshot if you want. So you don't think that I am cheating because the magic's happening on your side of the screen. Take a closer look at that poster on the bottom right corner. Houdini has his hands doing some crazy magic. Take a look at his hands. And yes, right in his hands, there's one card, the 10 of hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joseph. Uh, you are all amazing. You are all awesome. For those of you who are just about to start college, we have all been in that chair before. And all I can say it is, is that it is the best time of your lives. You will meet some of the friends that you will meet for the rest of your life. And I know that this is, this is, this is crazy what we're doing here, but you will, we will get past this. We will get past it together. And um, uh, uh, you will meet some friends. I promise you, I promise you. Um, Yes, Mackenzie says, I am greatly confused and also amazed. Thank you, Mackenzie. I too am greatly confused, but uh, also amazed. I, I love y'all. Uh, before, I, 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 wanna, I wanna leave you with, with, with something, but uh, before I do that, um, it, this show was born out of uh, my, my live magic show. And um, the, 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 it was, I wrote this show to, I put it together because students were, they would always come up to me after the show and they would ask me questions. And I found that they were asking the same questions over and over. So I decided to write this show and talk about the things that they're worried about uh, and things that they want to know. Cause and, uh, what I found uh, is that y'all never want to know how the magic works. Y'all want to know why I do this job and how I do it and so on and so forth. Um, and, and this is also a crazy time. The, 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 Right now, things are happening so fast in our world that like, I can't write it into the show <laughs> in, you know, in time. Do, do you have any questions for me? Any questions about what I do as a magician, uh, you know, uh, the, the virtual shows, what I do you know, outside in real life or whatever. Uh, the, this, you, some of you are, are freshmen, yes? If you have any questions, turn off that mic and... Um, uh, go from there. Oh, holy cow. I just, I just noticed something. I want you to, I don't want you to think that I tricked you here. I am going, uh, Madison messaged me privately like this, um, at 1 6 PM. And you didn't, I just realized you didn't see that. I don't want you to think that I picked the 10 of hearts, that Madison picked the 10 of hearts. Thanks, Madison. Uh, but, um, I'm here for you. If you, do you have any questions, what do you want to know? This is like a Reddit AMA now, except you can turn off your mic and ask me whatever you want, uh, or you can hit the chat window. Anybody? You are all happy. Fantastic. Then um, chime in at any point if you want to, uh, if you want to um, know anything. Shout out to uh, Dr. Chalampan. Like uh, He wants me to call him Seth, but I have to call him the doctor. I, I've met him. Uh, uh, like five years ago, performing the show in person. And thank you for thinking of me and uh, making me a part of this impactful programming series. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, and then to uh, the students who are about to, to uh, I'll get to you in a moment, to the professors, the administrators, I see a few of you there. Great to see your faces. Thanks for joining me and uh, putting your trust in me in what I do. 
And for those of you who are about to start college uh, and, and those of you who are in college right now, I will leave you with this. Um, there is nothing, uh, how do I put this? There, there, there's nothing strange or unusual about feelings of sadness um, during like really stressful times, uh, especially during this time. Everyone's experience is unique, but it doesn't mean that uh, you're going through it alone. And um, for many of you, you may think, oh, I've heard this already, or I don't know. But, you know, I, I always want to say this in case someone is feeling, you know, the funk, you know. Um, your experience may be unique, but you are not alone. And these times are not normal times. So you've got people to talk to and you've got places to turn to, especially with a spectacular university like Indiana University Southeast. If you choose to seek health, uh, help, it is not a sign of weakness. In fact, it's the very opposite. Taking the initiative to recognize that you're feeling sadness or feeling some funk at your core, that requires strength and courage. So um, be awesome, be you. And I, I promise you that uh, it will get better. And I promise you, you will get through whatever life throws at you. Folks, it's been an honor. Once again, my name is Joseph. And uh, anytime you need to reach me, it's Joseph Tran on the Insta, Face, the Twit, the Web, whatever. You know how to find me. You probably already looked me up before I even started my show. Have an awesome time at Indiana University Southeast. And if you see my name again, virtually or in person, come see me, okay? Take care, folks. It has been an honor. Have a fantastic time. Have a wonderful day. And uh, truly, much love to you. Much love to you. Take care now. Bye-bye.